Obi Wan Kenobi Part Three. <laughs> This was a good episode. I wouldn't say it was brilliant, but it was still good. So it picks up where episode 2 left off, where Kenobi, Princess Leia, escaped from the planet that she was taken captive on, and they're on this other planet where they're posing as farmers so that stormtroopers and other people will not <coughs> clock on who they really are. They're walking on this planet, there's sand. Reminds me of Tatooine, but it's not. And as they're walking on, Kenobi sees Anakin Skywalker. He sees him in the distance before he was all burned and all he has a robe and all on him. And I don't know if it's a hallucination of Kenobi's or if Darth Vader has sent a projection of himself to Kenobi in order to taunt him or just to say, hey, I'm coming for you. Or it could be Kenobi having his PTSD going over and seeing Anakin everywhere when he's not really there. Who knows? We might find out later on in the season. So they go on to the, they managed to hitch a ride. Uh, Princess Leia was all for it. Kenobi was like, no, we're better off walking. The less people around us, the better. The less chances of being discovered and found out. And uh, she manages to get them on. Uh, so then Kenobi, reluct- Kenobi, Kenobi reluctantly agrees to go on to the transport vehicle. And they're taken on. Then they are stopped by stormtroopers who also hitch a ride. And they ask who Kenobi is and who Princess Leia is, and he's like, oh, she's my daughter, which is not. And <coughs> Kenobi accidentally calls her Leia. The Stormtrooper clock on because he gave them a fake name. And they're like, you know, you call her Leia. And he's like, oh, she just reminds me so much of uh, my wife, her mother. And it's true, um, Princess Leia, you know, is meant to resemble Padme, while, you know, has Anakin Skywalker's father. Her feistiness, her cunningness, and but the you know Kenobi is all like, oh, I just miss my wife so much, like she died, and the stormtroopers buy it, they buy into it, and then they stop and get off, and this drone flies over, and Kenobi knows, okay, shit's about to go down, I'm gonna figure it out here, I'm gonna find out here, and um, it scans him and recognizes him. This is Obi Wan Kenobi. <coughs> So he, whilst this is going down, he is mentally and physically preparing himself for battle because he knows this is it. There's no way out of this. No other way out of this. Uh, takes out the blaster, kills the stormtroopers, and um, then another group of stormtroopers arrive. And there's it looks like what looks like a commander is with them. Much to Kenobi's surprise, and my surprise, she guns down the stormtroopers from behind, and reveals that you know she. Uh, is on his side. Then she takes him back to uh, the nearest town or so, and it's more or less shelter for them. And <coughs> she reveals that she, uh, she joined the uh, the empire, not knowing what it was really all about. But as she had gotten herself in too deep, she realised that the empire was bad and the Jedi were good. And because she's got in so deep, I think it's just too late for her to back out. Fuck off. Oh, and then that moment, Kenobi has somewhat of an anxiety attack, and he looks out, you know, through the cracks of the door, and he's able to sense Darth Vader's presence, and realizes that Darth Vader is there, knows he's there, and is coming for him. And while he's there, Darth Vader starts, you know, force choking and snapping necks of the villagers that are in the area, and. I don't know if it's just his way of trying to find Kenobi, or it, it, it seems to be he knows Kenobi's there, he knows he's watching him, and he's doing that there to try and taunt Kenobi to come on out and stop him, come on out and fight. But Kenobi is too scared, you know, with his PTSD and everything that he went through. You know, he's, he's lost confidence in himself. He doesn't seem to believe, from what I can tell, that he'd be able to take Darth Vader down anymore. Stretch. Ugh. Ugh. And then Kenobi and Princess Leia make a break for it. They run. Darth Vader spots Kenobi, and they he chases Kenobi through. You know, like, well, I think it was the canyons or so. Kenobi was like, "The Darth Vader, what have you become?" And Darth Vader was like, "And I knew he was going to say this. 
I am what you made me. He basically wants a fight, a rematch. He wants revenge. He wants to get Kenobi because Kenobi's the reason that he um got that he lost his arms and legs and was burned, you know, to, near enough to a crisp. And he basically wants to do to Kenobi what Kenobi did to him. So with his lightsaber, he sets fire to the ground and using the force drags Kenobi through it. And I'm surprised that Kenobi didn't get as many burns as he should have. You know, so he, but he does it slowly. He drags him slowly, and he wants Kenobi to burn and suffer just like he did. And they they, they did have a lightsaber duel there. Um, I I'd say they're probably going to meet again and have another duel because Kathleen Kennedy said that this is going to be the rematch of the century. You call that a rematch? Seriously? No. So obviously they're going to meet again and have a proper fight. But whether it live up to the expectations or not, who knows? The commander that took them in uh, shoots more of the stormtroopers and creates a distraction and is able to get Kenobi out. Uh, at this point, Kenobi's passed out from his injuries, from the burns, and she takes him away. Meanwhile, Princess Leia was told to follow um, through a tunnel to meet somebody else that would take her away to safety. And the Inquisitor has already killed the person that's meant to take her and chases her, trying to get her. So, um, what, I, what I liked about this, one thing I left out, I forgot to mention at the start, is that Kenobi is reaching out to his former master, Qui-Gon Jinn. And you can tell, you can tell. And I think I think it's been confirmed, I haven't looked much into the Kenobi um, project. But uh, Liam Neeson is totally going to show up as a force ghost, as Qui-Gon Jinn at some point. He's going to show up at the right moment to give Kenobi a hand with something and give him words of wisdom. Maybe he'll be the one <coughs> to help Kenobi put the anxiety aside. But it's going to happen. I reckon probably towards the end of the season, maybe the final episode or two, or the second last episode, it'll be then that he'll show up. Uh, it'll be that. I'm looking forward to that. There, I, I'm fairly certain that's going to happen. So th th this episode was, was good. I was talking to someone and uh, they don't like the actor that plays the young princess Leia. They kind of, he felt that the, the actor playing her is a bit too much. Like trying too hard to be Princess Leia, but the, I mean, I, I, I can see where he's coming from, but suppose that's pretty much what Princess Leia would have been like as a child, you know, she's, um, that's what the, she was like as an adult, but uh, he kind of feels that it's a bit too much, you know, it's overdone. Maybe, maybe not, you know. But I, I see what he means, and I, I don't think that they I think the casting was, you know, perfect. I think that actor plays a great job playing, playing, playing young Princess Leia. You know, I, I like how this series is, it's filling in the gap between the prequels and the original trilogy. It's acknowledging both of them and tying everything together. That's what I really like about this here. And... I hope it just goes. I want to see more prequel content and the original trilogy content, you know, to help merge them. And um, that, that's what the secret trilogy should have done a lot more. There wasn't really, in my opinion, enough of that there. But uh, <coughs> that would be amazing. So, I mean, I, I think I probably preferred like the first two episodes over the third one. But this one was still good. Still better than the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I have another friend who um, won't bother with the Kenobi series. Uh, he, in his mind, his head canon, the original trilogy is all there is. Like there is no prequels, there are no sequel trilogy. Uh, it's just three movies. So um, Alec Guinness is his Obi Wan Kenobi. <coughs> For me, it's Ewan McGregor, but I did like Al Alec Guinness, and I can see that like, Ewan McGregor is bringing his version of Kenobi closer to Alec Guinness. Which is cool. Uh, I think Ewan McGregor was born to play the young Obi Wan Kenobi. He does such a tremendous job. Um, blah. I think that's all I have to say. Um, I'm looking forward to this big rematch that Darth Vader and Kenobi have. Hopefully, it happens sooner. Maybe not, but it should. Bye bye.